podcast about this, but I participated in the Beat the Pandemic Hackathon. I met this researcher from MIT that's like working on like a using AI for like signal analysis and a bunch of things. And then and then I reached out to this guy from a university in Arizona that's trying to use a type of performer to diagnose diagnosed. And then we had a lead in just now. So that's you cut pretty good. for a second. Okay, so I basically after with that four, one. Yeah, make sure your cable's plugged in properly because it's really, really crunchy. Okay. It's really, really crunchy. All right, I think I'm just going to make it go. Oh, bit. nice. It's, it's great. That's okay. better. It was just too close so, to my face. I think you were just pressing something or making something go crunchy. It's fine. Just talk now. Okay. So after, so I basically talked to this professor at a university in Arizona that's trying to, that's trying to diagnose COVID-19 and like, and then he said he'd like give me data in two weeks so that we could work together on do, doing some ML based diagnosis using a form of Ram spectroscopy, which is pretty epic. That's very cool. Okay. I, I, I don't think you really need to know that, but I was gassed about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Thanks for sharing. It's, it's amazing. And you know, it's, it's just, it's very cool to see how people like it doesn't matter if like you you have a degree or anything you can just reach out to people and be like hey let's work together and you know pandemic forecasting or whatever it's cool yeah hi dan hi you hi young Hello. and hi max how you doing dan you okay yeah i'm good i'm, I'm, I'm chilling hanging in there oh i really i need to bring up a uh, notes. I'll do notes. I don't want to do notes, but I'll do notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So maybe I'll I'll start with some organizational updates, and uh, I've been. You're good, Tyler. Yep. Just just trying to find the right document because I've got too many things called daily now. There's daily <laughs> everything's. <laughs> Yeah, sheets. Too Google many Docs. documents and sheets called daily. Yeah. So in terms of organizational updates, I'm I'm personally a little bit overloaded in terms of information. And like yesterday we uploaded I believe like six or seven calls, which were like hour long minimum. And it would take an entire day to actually watch I them. Had, I had two hour long calls alone. And yeah, that's just to me. I just had to, you know, it's just, yeah, I can't. And I watched somebody else's hour long call. So I'm like, beyond that, and my brains can't handle anymore. Which were the, what were the calls about? Well, the, the one that I was super excited about is our preparation for a conference, scientific conference that we got invited to speak about Corona Y and kind of like how this whole like on management works where we don't have like bosses and it's completely fluid and things like that. The conference is called uh, JITMA, uh, G-I-T-M-A dot org. And we're it's a management run... organization <laughs> thing in it. Yeah, and uh, basically we got invited to run an uh, one and a half hour workshop and we're trying to make it uh, interactive. So we're gonna invite um, you know, academics to participate in some of the things that we're uh, ha facing as challenges in Corona Y and also tell them like that like it works somehow and and also would be cool to see if some of those people will be like uh-huh you know it works because and and just join us to to help us figure this out so that was a almost two hour long call and it's on our youtube channel and whoever wants to um to overload himself, you can watch that video. It's so it's hopefully. not little. It's it's very intellectually dense. Let's describe yeah. it as that. It's, there's a lot. There's a lots of discussions about various complications and elements that we're going through as an organization. I only caught yeah. like an hour out of it. Yeah, you just clickbaited a lot of people in, into watching that video. <laughs> did I? I don't think I did. Maybe I did, but it's not bait because. 
bits. Click clickbait makes you feel like it's never as fulfilling as the lie that they tell at the mm -hmm. beginning. I feel like it's it's a good. I don't feel like I, I don't feel like I'm on to, of overselling it. I feel like it's a it was a really interesting yeah. discussion. But yeah, we discussed like the the actual like processes, how some of the things weirdly resemble gaming in a way which was quite a discovery for us as a group to talk about all things and apparently a lot of people game and like in our community and like we we understand that we employ the same strategies for management and getting things done which is cool and just discussing how uh, this on management uh, separates the pre-covid world and post-covid world and generally exciting discussion so very interesting the second call that a long call that we had and i uh, jumped only for a short amount of time is a call was katie miller another follow-up to structure discovery engine and ai powered literature review and that was between anton uh, and katie primarily and i still haven't listened to it because there is too much and anton loves uh, metaphors and analogies uh, a lot so it's it's a, bit, it's a bit rich from you <laughs> that's a little bit that is a little bit rich from you Arthur. that'd be like somebody yeah, likes that. interesting ways of describing <laughs> things i'm like that's literally 80 percent of Arthur's discussion style is lot about this analogy and that analogy i can't say oh i'm exactly the same i'm just calling you out on it <laughs> anton beats me to it for sure yeah but that's also fascinating call because we're getting closer and closer to formalize the vision of this kind of first product. Um, again, there's so much stuff happening that like the, the uncertainty keeps increasing and entropy keeps in, uh, increasing, but like it, we're doing our best to formalize it. And like, uh, if, if you're familiar with quantum mechanics, just have the wave function to collapse and like have some, some actual uh, service that is useful and brings utility to uh, to the world. Prime example of an analogy right there. <laughs> True. <laughs> an analogy that only a very small amount of people who understand quantum mechanics are going to understand. Everyone else is like, I don't know what it means. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, let's get on with this. Yeah. Dan, yeah. VT, what's going on? Is it is it complicated? Is there a lot? Tell us what's going on. There's not, no, it's not, not, not tons. Um, the big thing was the Charlie talk. I thought that went great. Charlie is an awesome teacher. Um, and then refactoring continues. And um, contradictory claim stuff. We got back kind of the first round from the annotators. So we're just trying to assess annotator consistency and then we'll decide how to proceed from there and that's it well that was brief yeah uh, nice. easy peasy uh, easy peasy um i forgot anyone else from any other teams here you don't have to be a team lead to talk about what a team's doing even if it's only a section of it we've got max Prangeli, Prangelia, I can't, I'm probably butchering your name. I've heard, the problem is the only person I've ever heard say your name is Maya, and Maya's got a very specific accent that I can't mimic, so. <laughs> um, you the wrong man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have no doubt that I butchered your name, I'm very sorry. There's some stuff with my going on. I will continue with the chat. It was very hard to hear you. Can you repeat that, please? We only heard migrating something. Oh, okay. It's not uh, a big deal. I mean, update. if you can, you can always just update the document if you've got your piece to put in. You're part of risk factors team. Mine's not here, but I'm sure I've not actually been in any team calls for most of the week. I've actually tried to have less calls. I've been trying to do other stuff, so. Um, um, oh, he's got to go. Uh, has anybody else got anything interesting to discuss or anything, any ideas that they've got or any problems that they're bumping into? Um, um, I have a question about maybe something that 
the search engine he may or may not have started on. What if there was a sort of Q and A, a Q and A uh, machine, like something based off of Doctor Q A, that would be able to something that's based off of the open domain, like question and answering things that could be retrained on COVID nineteen data, like a corpus of COVID nineteen data, and then you doctors, like regular doctors could ask questions and then get answers. Or if this is made for documents that are for like public use, regular people could ask and get their questions answered. Yeah, so uh, actually I had an idea and that's why we're, we're working with Dan and uh, Kaggle, uh, hold on, uh, on the CoronaMed uh, portal and <clears throat> creating the, the next version of it. Um, with like public tables that are um, more like condensed. But what we want to do is actually add a place for people to generate these questions. So, you know, can the virus be transmitted asymptomatically and blah, 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 just for, for doctors to jump in and ask those questions. And then we can uh, do the initial uh, Q&A using like Stanford question answering data set, basically trained mm -hmm. um, on COVID-19 and just see what it outputs. And then we can have medical annotators uh, correct these um, answers. And that's that's very exciting idea, but also very intense in terms of resources and, and people involved. I was thinking, I, I believe I read somewhere. Wait, let me share my screen. Don't mind what I'm reading on Quora. Oh, don't wait. Just don't worry about if I if I had to worry about what every tab I open, I'd, my brain would melt. Uh, all right. Oh, so github.com slash Facebook research. Uh, it's like this. So it appears to just read wiki. It just looks at Wikipedia mm -hmm. and is able to extract something. Yeah, see, it's squad too. Uh, at the top. But but I feel like squad is th this doesn't like I kind of sort of understand it. But I I was thinking there was something that I saw in like two minute papers or something where you would be able to submit a a sort of corpus of data and then get results about like if you ask questions on it. I only saw that example happen with like very very. Small examples like, oh, who's Bob and what did he do? He went to the park. But I could that be used possibly for Cord 19 or something so. larger? I, I, I think um, the problem the problem is is um well, from my understanding so far is not the problem is like the problem is we've got more questions than we've got answers. So lots of people are gonna ask questions that we that research doesn't exist to give answers to. So the problem is, is you're given this false idea of like this nice question answer machine that's got very little answers and there's going to be more questions. And even the que answers to questions are going to be so nuanced and specific. It's like if someone asks a question of like, yeah, if you could ask something like really general, like is COVID-19 a virus? Yes, easy peasy. You can knock that one out of the park all day long. But if it starts to be like, should I wear a mask inside? If, you know, if should I be wearing a mask inside? The question is, the answer to that is possibly, maybe, or in these circumstances, yes. But it, the problem is, is there's so much, um, there's, so, there's so much noise and so little concrete answers there is no, there's no, con there's no definite yes. There's very few definite yes, no answers. And everything else is going to be so nuanced and so subtle that the only people who are going to be able to actually interpret the information are experts who can then interpret into simpler, more easily digestible communication. And that's kind of a sticking point when we already know that there's a hundred thousand pieces of documentation on COVID-19 or COVID-19 related things. We are currently trying to solve the problem of research. The next problem after that would be communicating that to the general populace. But the researchers need to find the answers before we can simplify the answers into a more concrete, understandable problem, more, more like general purpose layman speak. So I absolutely yeah, because... love the idea, but, the, but I love the idea in its theory 
but right. the, the the problem is delivering on it in anything resembling a near term that are going to be answering questions that are going to have people have right now is um, right. I, f- I feel like is it's 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 a simple it's a simple idea with a simple solution with an absolutely complicated you know complicated problem it's just a, it's again it goes back to the idea of like complexity and right. so many things are so complicated that everyone wants nice and easy answers and the problem is nice easy answers are really good at making people think that's a, the right answer because it's concrete. Yeah. But mm-hmm. so few things actually are a simple answer. So, you know, the, it goes back to so much of this entire pandemic right. management problem is people can't think to the level of systemic complexity required to actually fully comprehend it. No one can. Everyone can, everyone can only understand and comprehend to a certain level. And the models are always limited because but everything is just a model everything is just a concept so right but it wouldn't be about in general it wouldn't try to derive something su- substantial in the sense of it wouldn't be able to look at papers and draw a conclusion from that it'll be no. more it'll be more like what we're, is, we're, right? we're uh, can you see my screen we're yeah yeah i see your screen the problem is that we will end up with this which brings almost zero utility because it's not really like there is no answer and yeah. it only gives all, you so all, much... all you're gonna get all you're gonna get is these are the 10 20 30 thoughts on this idea and you have to be a researcher to fully understand the answers that have been provided so so until we start to have stronger more comfort like basically the problem is is science is messy and if you're going to summarize it science is messy and mm-hmm. science is slow it really is no one let, let no one ever pretend like it's not it's messy and it's slow and it's incremental and the problem is is people don't want incremental slow possible noise they want yes i want to do that no you know should i go to this protest Am I at risk? What is the chance of me? They, they want like yes, no answers or percentage chances. And it, no matter what the answers, anything like this generates, I guarantee you it's going to be more wrong than right. And it's going to be more wrong than right, not because anyone would intentionally try and make it wrong. It's because there's no one can make a model good enough to be more right than wrong right now because there isn't enough answers. There is only questions. So until we spend some more time answering questions and refining the problems, we are not going to, like the research community cannot deliver answers. We are still in the question phase of searching, never mind the the answer phase. Actually, he doesn't know which questions to ask. Yeah, so I mean, we're still in the developing the question stage of science right now. We're not even in the, what are the answers to these questions? Some questions have been formulated. You know, what would it take to make a vaccine? These are questions that we know early, but there is still experimentation involved in it. I mean, people are going to turn up going, how long is it going to be until there's a vaccine? And the answer is going to be... I don't know. It could be it could be 18 months. It could be five years. It could never happen. And that's not an answer what anyone wants. <laughs> that's not that you don't go to a question answer machine and go, can you give me a quick answer to this question? And it goes, no, because that's what it's, it's either going to do that or it's going to give you false promise. And that's why no one's investing time in that yet. You know, like Wikipedia is a very good resource of knowledge. It's an amazing resource of knowledge, but it is being constantly edited and changed and refined as knowledge is increased. But it's still like there's still people still argue about something that's 200 years old. This thing's been around months. <laughs> it's like, Actually, it's, because no, there's no answers yet. There's only questions. There is a, a very important concept of the, of the fact uh, that which I think I'm cutting off. Um, can you can you hear me fine? Yeah. I think my connection sucks. Let me try. Oh, is it is yeah, your connection's um, going a bit well. I was saying that there are in context the one that in, in the past three months. Oop. Let me join from mobile. Sorry I got a bit ranty there, Fiji. I wasn't I wasn't trying to oh, make no, you upset I understand. Right, but I was just trying to Can you hear me 
concretize the fact that this problem is so much more complicated than anyone is giving it. Lots of specialists are giving it the respect of, mm -hmm. yes, it's very complicated, but no one wants, sorry, it's too complicated. Sorry. Is it better now? Yeah. Can you hear me now? It's a, it's a bit yeah, better. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, the, there is a very important concept that I learned in the past three months that I was absolutely unaware of, is the fact that the knowledge is subjective. And it's really dependent on the observer, like the operator of that um, you know, data that he's looking at. And for one researcher, one data can be interpreted in one way. For the other one, in a completely different way. And it's all subject to direction of research that they have the data that they have and the purpose of actually yeah, the pri also the pri their prior knowledge will affect their perception of the value of certain parts of data and yeah there's yeah because there's the a, same thing goes to, to wikipedia like when you read about i don't know avocado being good for health like it's subjective like they're like for some people avocado may be bad because you know, they have elevated something and blah, blah, blah. So it's, there is no such thing as objective knowledge and it's impossible to create the Q&A system that operates with unstructured data and provides objective knowledge, but it's possible to reduce uncertainty uh, for researchers given enough context of what they're looking at and for which, which purpose. Which is why anything with concrete answers that without qualifiers and context way more than anyone wants to sit down and learn isn't going to be um accurate so it's it's just yeah there's just but of course people want that to, because that's how wants it. Brains, yeah that's right. how brains work yeah the, we were like what's two plus two it's four it's four every day of the week and no matter which way you spin it it's four everyone yeah. likes that sort of thinking but if it goes it goes back to interpreting money like it goes back to politics and perception and culture and language choices and loads of like psychological problems and ways of points of view. It's like one person could say this is true and another person could say that's true and they could both agree that the other person is wrong because of some element of their argument. And they might both be actually right that the other person is wrong because it might be somewhere between the two. <laughs> it's just that's the nature yep. of arguments and politics and subtlety and just it's it's deep it's probably more complicated and it's probably more which is why arthur and i consistently say that we're more wrong than we are right because we just admit that we are f flawed individuals with a very specific set of knowledge that we we know we we are aware of how little we actually know rather than some people who give you false certainty with the idea that oh well it's this answer and it's like well, I mean, medical health and health, you know, the biology and health, you know, you could get 50 people in a row. You could get 50 adults, the exact same age, the same sex from the same part of a country, and their biology could be completely different between the 50 people. Scale that up to eight, seven billion, and you've got a scale of complexity that just you can't get answers to that make any real sense. Exactly. And that's why, you know, personalized, personalized medicine, personalized nutrition, all of these things are picking up because people are finally understanding that there is no like silver bullet to everything. But I think one thing, I, I, I guess I wasn't specific enough with what I was trying to reach with the Q&A idea was that, and I don't know if this is already being achieved by the search engine, but it's that the usage of synonyms could potentially throw off the throw off something and a q a would have to tokenize everything in a way that if there's some if there are two words that are very similar yeah i think but the, works is that with search problem. engine search engines working with the idea of okay. similar similar words being yeah. basically tracked with the and same basically content. we're using i think we're using the the side bird and other things, but yeah, there is a, a very exactly what bird does, you know, at there least is a part of what bird does. Yeah, there is a dream project of Anton to actually train Corona bird, and um, you know to to do that on Core nineteen data set, and hopefully uh -huh. he accomplishes that because that will enable a much more powerful embeddings, which is like tokens and interconnections between things, and that will allow us to build first of all knowledge graph that will connect all the entities that <clears throat> we're recognizing with the cano 
uh, or the Kano uh, tool and also connect things like tables and tabular data and all the crazy data sets that were already scraping off the, the GitHub. And then, so, so that would be able to remedy the issue of having multiple, for example, COVID-19 and SARS coronavirus to be this be mentioned as different in a regular search. Actually, the, the thing that solves it for us right now is UMLS, which is Unified Medical Labeling System, which bubbles up all the possible variations of how things are mentioned. So for example, hydroxychloroquine um, is is also used like HCQ and other abbreviations. So UMLS- is in the same sort of way that when they talk about cardio and heart and anything that's a word that means the, the heart, the heart circulatory system and, and anything that's related to them words all get bunched into the same kind of meaning, depending on the context, rather than um, you having to train it individually on every single version of that medical knowledge word, because there are so much, so many words within the medical lexicon that, yeah, it's a very complicated science, you know, so sometimes the specificity of words is important, but the problem with specific words when they mean similar things but not the same things it's the it's the knowledge graph between them it's got to be yeah so you, the, the synonyms and other similar sounding words or similar meaning words but that all goes back to like language training as far as i understand but i am absolutely a novice on this so other people are probably much more uh, bare answers for you yeah i would Man. recommend ask a specific question in a uh, team search engine channel if you want okay you, you triggered a very deep discussion, which is uh, very cool because we we had to talk about this at some point and mm -hmm. I'm very glad we did. Yeah, well, thanks for clearing up my doubts about uh, how Search Engine is able to make sure that synonymous things are not confused for each other. It's, it's one of the, I think um, originally Team VT and Risk Factors were dealing with synonyms and medical knowledge and then we eventually pulled in UMLS and then a, there's, I think there's another medical library that they're trying to pull in from. So basically they're being used as um, an index for lack of a better word, or a, there's probably a better word for it, but I consider it like an index, a reference point of, okay, this word is similar to that word and it's similar to that word. Okay. That's how we'll associate it with them groups. And, and it's rather than having to train it from the medical knowledge that's in the papers, there's a reference model of the of the language that's there because that that's something that obviously only medical knowledge experts are going to be able to fully utilize so the idea of using somebody else's really big library of all their words it makes sense so would this would this be able to distinguish between the difference of having an exactly the same word just different different ways of saying it, like for hydroxychloroquine and hcq you said arter yep that's already done Right. Yep. So, is that's, there a distinction between is there a distinction between that and having synonymous words in your so Synonymous words is actually sold through embeddings, and you can do. There are such things as word to vec, which is right. transforming embeddings into vector space, and you can find similarities and distances between the words. And that and they're called lem, lemonization or something, where you find words that are basically the same. I don't know. I've, I've, is that right, Dan? Was it is it lemonization or lemonization? lemonization is when you you um, that's when you take the kind of root of the word. I think like you remove the suffixes. Yeah, that's semantic. And, yeah. Because right. there are two approaches, like semantical, which is like by the the actual like root of the word and uh, you know things in terms of so how taking things word. like re is the opposite or ing is you know it's like different elements of the word and if you can take them away you can take yeah, yeah. come back to the root of a, a noun or a verb or a, that sort of thing right. so it's yeah, like the root. grammatical understanding all right because yeah. i know that um I, I know brandon was doing that with the earlier data but i'm not sure if that was still being done part of the problem is, is i don't fully understand all the different libraries and all the things they do i'm only getting a rough idea so it's your question though, VJ, UMLS is for normalizing different controlled vocabularies. So it's like 
the like hydroxychloroquine could be referred to by all these different like identifiers and different databases like it could just be mm -hmm. like dv10123 is like the little identifier for hydroxychloroquine and then in this other database it's something else and all that umls is doing like specifically the metathesaurus is just putting all of those concepts together under one um kind of meta concept of like hydroxychloroquine so it's just reconciling those different identifiers it's not really doing like synonym. Mm -hmm. It's not at the source itself. Like this is just for reconciling um, those kinds of identifiers. So well, we the would want to use that in conjunction are, with. Yeah, the, the cinnamons are done through BERT and the embeddings. Yeah. The, the, at least the, the okay. part, I guess, the nuanced part for UMLS is that it's also used to not, not only house like uh, all these dictionaries together, but also link them together. So you can go from like, you know, uh, a more clinical focused dictionary like ICD code to something that's more um, holistic in terms of this like uh, uh, spread for medical knowledge like um, SNOMED CT or other things. And so um, it, if you can't, if you can't like find a, a dictionary that can fully capture what you're trying to extract, you can go to a different library or, or use both and then kind of like uh, cover for the gaps that mm -hmm. might be in your, in your document. OK. Yeah, and uh, it, to keep in mind that uh, any type of synonyms that are produced by uh, embeddings is still a um, statistical representation of the data and connections. There is no causal uh, inference involved, unfortunately. And this is the project that Jeremy uh, Zucker and, and other people in Task VT are working on to actually bring some uh, causal relationships to the embeddings. Right, Dan? Not in the context of like synonym or similarity finding in that sense, but like, yeah, for but example, if it was like predicting links in a knowledge graph and trying to understand why that link was predicted, like that kind of causal yeah. interpretations, yeah. Okay. So what the, so wait, never mind. Are you sure? Yeah, go for it. Yes. I just answered my own question. Cool. Fair and enough. It, I um, realized it was something that somebody had already talked about before. Okay. Happy. Um, it's been an interesting discussion. Um, um, I think we should probably wrap it up there unless anyone's any, got anything to bring forward separate to our kind of understanding of what the search engine is trying to do, discovery engine, search engine team. The engine team, I'm just calling them the engine team now. I've just decided that what what kind of engine it is is dependent on where we are in the context of the conversation. Yeah. If you um, call it an engine, but, you should name the actual tool itself Thomas. What? <laughs> Like the tank engine. If you if you're gonna call, call it, it engine, you might as mean, well call the. Do you mean might Thomas? Well call the tool, name it Thomas. Do you mean Thomas? Thomas, isn't, uh, Thomas the Thomas the train. Yeah, it's t Thomas. Thomas the, the H is from the silent. TV show. Yeah, I grew up watching Thomas the Tank Engine. It's just Thomas. <laughs> the H is silent because English does yes. weird things and yes. names are just <laughs> names like that. I don't know. Agree with it's it's Thomas the Tank Engine. I grew up Wait. watching it. In. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. If someone uh, can Thomas the Tank Engine is a tiny little blue. <laughs> it's not, a tiny little blue talking it's engine Thomas, of one okay. us. First of all, it's is it Thomas? Okay, first of all, it's Thomas and Friends. Now Thomas, I've I've Th seen Tom. it as Thomas and <laughs> Thomas the it's Train. It's spelt. It's spelt with a H. It is okay. pronounced and spoken yes. as as the H isn't not there. It's Tom. Thomas and Tom in English, yes. th is just a t when it's a name. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I I have, I have multiple friends named Thomas with the same like lettering. They they pronounce it Thomas. Yeah, I have seen Thomas without a h and with a h, and it's always just a t sound. I'm Tyler. If you, it's just a t. It's just a straight t sound. So Thomas the Tank Engine is an adorable kids cartoon about a group of trains that solve problems. Summarized, it's cute. It's good for five-year-olds. It's pretty much past the point, but it's funny because yeah, call it Thomas, as in Thomas the Tank Engine. We're probably going to get in trouble for that, but I like the cuteness <laughs> of it. Anyways, 
enough on this cute, cute winding up. Um, I don't really have much to say. Community, community engagement stuff is ongoing. Uh, we are looking for people who are interested in marketing. I will be putting some proper call outs for that because um, we want to build like the communications contacting side of the CRM. And if someone's got more experience with actual marketing systems in a CRM, they might be able to build it better than a novice who's just going to work it out as they go along, i.e. me. Um, other than that, I think we should wrap it up. It's been a really interesting chat though, guys. And I definitely think we should just have more interesting chats. That's what I'm 100% behind. Thanks for your uh, yeah. inclusion well, today, VJ. It's nice to have you here because it's nice to have someone else talking other than me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, well, it's nice to hear you talk because you explain things in a very clear fashion. Like it's easy to understand it. Thanks. That's literally the only reason I'm here. I feel like sometimes to just explain other people's complexity and include it on your CV. Just me explaining complicated stuff. The yeah. complexity. The, me explaining complexity is complex and it's underestimated in its complexity. I mean, like I feel like it's the most ridiculous statement I've ever made, but I like it all the same. Anyways, I will see you guys. <laughs> I'll see everyone at some point over the weekend. Reach out if you need anything. I'm happy to talk. Um, see you later, guys. All right. Bye bye. Yeah. yeah. I'll be sure. I'll be sure to reach out to you sometime soon to just have a regular chat because school's cool, almost man. over. Cool, man. Yeah. yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. I have chats if you want to have chats. I'm cool with that. I have. Yeah. Sometimes it's just nice to talk while I work. So whatever. Sure.